Hi guys, happy Tuesday. As I promised, I'm going to vlog today and I'm going to talk about acrylic colors again. And um, after the last video with the general overview, I thought I'd start with red tones uh, for what uh, I'm going to tell you what I know about acrylic. So I own four different reds in these kinds of bottles. Carmine Red, Cadmium Red, Hue Dark, Vermilion Red, and I hope I pronounced that correct, and Matter Deep. So these are all the different kinds of shades. Let me see if I can... Oh, come on, why do I have so small hands? So these are the four that I use, two of the brighter tones, two of the more Bordeaux darker tones. Um, all in all, I have to say, I'm quite happy with those tones. And uh, when I start, I would start with the light ones. So these are more on the cooler parts or the cooler side of the spectrum when it comes to light reds. While um, the vermilion red has a bit more yellow pigment in it than the carmine red. So this is a really cool red. Both of them are quite uh, opaque. Not as much as a wash as I experienced with other tones and other suppliers, I have to say, other brands. Um, for of these two, the vermilion red, I have to say, is a bit more uh, like a wash, so less opaque on the first go. This one is pretty opaque if you don't thin it down with water, which I hardly ever do. So depending on what I want to paint, um, if I want to have more of a yellowish red, but I want to have the color be opaque in the first go. I just mix a very tiny bit of the carmine red into the vermilion red to get it opaque and um, get rid of a bit of this kind of washy thing, like, almost like a varnish I'd say sometimes. So to get rid of that I mix those both and there's enough yellow pigment in there that the red that I get once I mix mix those both together is still more on the warmer side of the spectrum when it comes to red tones. So these are the only two that I need um, and that I could mix pretty much any color, red color with, um, there, there's like, uh, there's cadmium red on the market as well and some other tones and I did not find them useful if like, for example, I don't need cadmium if I have this vermilion red. Both are quite the yellowish red tones, more on the warmer side. And uh, why would I need a second bottle if um, I could maybe mix an orange with this particular color, the vermilion red, um, to get kind of like a cadmium red. So you can work around it, you don't have to have every tone, but you have to bear in mind all the red colors that are out there on the market are having difficulties with the opaqueness, on, like on the first stroke, I have to say. If you go over the second layer, sometimes you have to have a third layer. They're pretty opaque then. Um, for the dark reds, which I use way more often than the light reds, I do have Cadmium Red Hue Dark. This is that one. And I do have Matter Deep. They, these both, again, are very similar tones, where this one, the Cadmium Red, is more on the yellowish side. Again, this one is more on the blue side of the spectrum, the Matter Deep. And... It's pretty much the same thing as with the light tones like that I just showed. Um, the, the cadmium red is 
I have to say way better for any shadow things with uh, portraits. I had very great results there to go for the lips, for example, or just have other shadow parts like deep shadows that are more in um, skin, like with skin tones. I get very good results with the cadmium red hue dark together with Van Dyke browns for the real deep shadows. It's a lovely, lovely mixture. The matter deep I use more with nature, I have to say. So the dark spots of flowers maybe or um, what else? Um, tree leaves, something like that. So uh, also on birds, some feathers. If you have um, uh, maybe like a uh, a parrot, I think that's what it's called. Just in case to make sure the bird that pirates do have on their shoulders, I think it's a parrot. <laughs> so if you have something like that, kind of a bird, and you want to go for feathers, I use this um, matter deep more. Um, again, they're slightly um more on the well they are not opaque on the first stroke but uh they are more opaque than the light reds i have to say so with these ones um i did not really have any problems or it was like oh i'm annoyed now because i gotta wait and then i gotta go over it again and you have like tiny pieces only you might have you might forget something uh like applying color on the second layer or whatever so um never had a problem with those also these are quite thick colors like consistency wise so they applied perfectly with the palette knife while the light reds um i usually mix them with uh gel medium to get a better result when i paint not with brushes but, but with palette knives so they are pretty much on the ver on the verge to the point where I say, okay, I'm I'm this color is too thin for what I want to do on the uh, canvas with a palette knife, and there's really a, a different a difference between the red tones and other colors I experienced so far. So. Um, Again, there's lots and lots of dark red tones, like real Bordeaux classic dark red color. But I think I was, uh, or I didn't miss any other color. I had a cool tone, I had a warm tone, and that's pretty much enough. Uh, all the other things I just mixed on my own, so I never had the need to buy any more of the red tones and I think four colors is quite enough even if you're if you're not as experienced yet with mixing colors on your own let's say so once I will have used those up I will uh, only go for the carmine red in the end and have that as a mixing color. I said a couple of blocks ago that I would go into mixing colors on my own rather than buying certain tones. So I will only go with the carmine red in the end. And if I want to have a, a warmer red tone, I just use some yellows. Mixing them together, you get a warmer tone. So that's fairly easy then. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little rant about what I think about my red color paints and uh, I'm very curious if you experience the same thing with the brands that you are using if the red colors are quite difficult with opaqueness and um, if you may have experienced the same differences between using them with a brush or using them with a palette knife. So I would very much appreciate if you would maybe leave me a comment or let me know in any other capacity. And uh, I think I'm going to end this vlog now. I will see you tomorrow with a board game vlog probably then from the 
Un Perfect House in Essen where we have the warm-up. I try to put some art in there. There's beautiful artwork in the Un Perfect House, so I might have that on my vlog. Otherwise, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Take good care and enjoy. Go create. Bye.